Hi everybody, this is Osprey from MyChartCoach.com and in this video we're going to take a look at the marine transportation stocks that were in play on Friday and then we're going to take a look at a couple of other plays that, that are uh, currently setting up. But yeah, this is mainly about the marine transportation uh, stocks in this video and first up here is TOPS, T-O-P-S. Okay, nice move, closed up 26%. Um, it's still at, at extreme oversold levels on RSI at 17.8, so very oversold. There was a bullish crossover here on, on uh, uh, Fasto, so it, it crossed over the 20 line, so it, it went from uh, above the oversold level. 20 is oversold on Fasto for the first time in many months. This is a three-month chart, so that signals the chart is heating up. You know, you've got this slight uptick on on plus DI and a slight downtick on minus DI. So just all signals that the chart is starting to heat up. If you look down here at Parabolic SAR, uh, parabol uh, parabol parabolic SAR it, it are the green dots above the, the candles here. And, and, and SAR stands for stop and reverse. And notice how the, the dots flip below the candles on Friday. So you've got the, the, the uh, P SAR dot now at 18. And so that is signaling the possible start of a new uptrend. On the 18th, on this white candle right here, it, tops had a dead cat bounce. If you look at all these red candles in a row, it finally bounced on the 18th, and then uh, it followed through, making higher higher lows. So notice the 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 ascending support line. Each day there was higher lows. So that 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 was you know the, uh, or the real candle body was formed at a higher level. You can see that there was a little bit of a lower low here on Friday, but you get the point. The 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 share price is creeping up higher slowly and then on uh, what we've been looking for on this chart is a close above EMA 4 currently at 0 0.2293 that's the pink line on the chart notice how all these candles close below the pink line there was a slight close above that level here on the 6th of June but notice none of these candles are above EMA 4 you have to literally go off this chart to find a close above EMA 4 besides this small close above until Friday okay so that was the first close above that level and for us that is the bull signal. That's signaling more upside potential. So going forward, tops is in play if candles are forming above that pink line. If they hold EMA4 at 0 0.2293, that signals more upside potential. If you get a close back below EMA4, do not hold. It will be a very, very risky play to hold. Look at the downside risk. This is the riskiest stock out there. This along with dries. These are super, super, uh, you know, uh, very risky stocks to play. Um, very risky stocks to trade. The reason why we follow them is because they make big moves every once in a while, like they did on Friday. Notice the giant volume spike, and then there was a push above EMA 8, which is currently at 20, uh, uh, 0 0.255, and, and then it also ran all the way up to the middle Bollinger Band, and that was our, our, our target at 0 0.36. And so it hit our target um, intraday, and then it pulled back. And so uh, that, that was uh, an intraday climax. It needs to close above the middle Bollinger Band to get a new uptrend going. If you could see just above the middle Bollinger Band is EMA 13, currently at 0 0.45. And so that's going to be the, the, the second big level to break. So next week, bulls want to see EMA 8 turn into support and a close above the middle Bollinger Band to signal possible, possible new uptrend starting, and then it's got to get above EMA 13. If that happens, then it could really get moving. You know, the, the, the upper Bollinger Band's all the way up here at, at about 75, and, and then you've got this gap up here. There's a gap with the, uh, the bottom of the gap here and the top of the gap here. And so if it could possibly turn the middle Bollinger Band into support, we could be talking about a gap fill up here, and that would be an incredible run. Um, you know, don't hold your breath. Tops is, uh, you know, disappoints a lot. You can see here it gave back the gains intraday, most of them. It still closed very bullish and above the, the EMA4 and EMA8. So that was the best close that it's had in months and months. So that's why we're talking about this stock today. So next week we're going to be looking for follow through. It, going forward, candles forming above EMAs4 and 8 in the daily chart signal more upside potential and candles forming below signal, do, uh, signal downside risk and do not hold. Okay, don't be a bag holder on this. Just be sure to be sure to trade it. These are just dates. The moves happen quickly. And, and dries is a good example of how quickly the, the gains can come and disappear. Okay, notice that it closed down 28% uh, on the day. You know, it actually went from uh, being down on the day to green and then uh, back down to down again. And, and if you were following the action, it was typical dries. You know, um, very oversold on RSI. You do have a bullish crossover in Fasto, so it's heating up. Bulls want to see Fasto get above 20. And so 
this had a big gap down uh, open on Friday. So notice there's multiple gaps on the chart. There is an unfilled gap up here between these two candles. This is the top of the gap. This is the bottom. So eventually, if it did run higher, we'd be looking at a, a potential gap fill up here. But first things first, um, you know, this was a, a, a big bounce off this 125 low. Okay, the open was here. It ran down to 125, and then it really got smoking. And, and what we look for when, when a stock is trading uh, below EMA4 here like this, notice that this is just like the uh, the the tops chart where all the candles are forming below EMA4. You know, there was a close up here, um, but but it failed to uh, get above EMA8, and the downtrend continued. Okay, and so so the the, the run for these types of plays is always back to EMA4 resistance. Knows how it never breaks. So what you want to do when you load it down here is you wanted to have your sell set at EMA4 at 337. Always look to sell dries at EMA4 resistance until it closes above. That then you could think about doing something different. But each one of these candles is telling you that you should be selling at EMA4. Every single one of them. You've got you've got uh, you know literally countless examples of why EMA4 is well, where you take profits on dries. Okay, and so if it finally closes above EMA4, then we'll be talking about a potential run up to EMA8. Until then, any kind of bounce is just a move back to that level. That is the sell zone. So, so that happened intraday. Notice there was a giant volume spike. You know, they ended up dumping a whole bunch of shares again. You know, there's probably a whole bunch of people that are trapped. You know, what you have to do is you have to learn how to trade, and, and knowing how to trade is knowing how to follow the charts, in our opinion. And so here, this is a perfect example of what happened during the day. Okay, so notice that there was the big down drop down. This is the open on, or the close on Friday, and this is the, or the close on Thursday, and this is the open on Friday. So this is the top of the gap. This is the bottom of the gap. And then notice how it, how it traded sideways. Okay, once it closed above EMA4, that was a signal the chart was heating up, but it still was risky to trade, okay? Because, you know, if you loaded here, you were headed for, the, the trade was between EMA4 and the bottom of the gap. The bottom of the gap is always tough to break. That's the green line right there. This candle right here at 145, that was the green light. That was the ticket right there, okay? You know, it didn't happen on a giant volume spike, but it was the signal that this thing wanted to head higher. The, the close above the middle, Bollinger Band and above the bottom of the gap, so even more upside potential. At two o'clock, a big volume spike came and a push higher, and, and, and the candles really started running after that. So take note, you know, a close above the bottom of the gap is the signal to ride. This only had you only had a two-hour window of opportunity to make this trade to, to load here and then sell here at the top. Now, now once there was a climax on this candle right here, notice how how it came up and it and it and it filled the gap. This is called a gap fill when it breaks below and all these candles. Fill the space. Know how this is. A, look how this is an empty space. These candles filled it. That is a climax. And, and and what you look for after a climax like that, if you did not sell at the when the gap fills, always look to sell on a gap fill. Then you want to sell on the next red candle, and that happened right away. Notice what it hit. The 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 it hit the hundred simple moving average currently at 363, and it pulled back. This pullback. This is what we call a climax spike. Notice the long upper wick forming off of high of day, accompanied with a giant volume spike. We teach this. Every Every single day in our chat, you're getting this for free right now just by watching this video. So congrats to you for taking the initiative to, to uh, take your trading to the next level. But this is the climax spike and that signal downside risk and the lock-in profits. Notice that there was the uh, break below the 50 simple moving average that signal more downside risk. A close below EMA 4, 8, and 13 that signaling more downside risk. And now what we have is a potential bounce on Monday off the middle Bollinger Band at 188. That is the key level to hold. If you share see the share price or 186 if you see it drop below this 186 190 level th then you can see a big downside risk if it bounces off that level you want to see it get back above the 50 simple moving average at 261 if that happens you could see a run again okay so yeah so just keep in mind that that dries is for trading very very quick trading the gains are there and you've got to lock them in and then don't get caught holding the bag it's it's a risky game and and we don't recommend new traders trading stocks like dries and tops Save that for the pros or for people with more experience. If you're a rookie, just sit back and watch and learn from the experience. But don't get caught up because what happens, many people end up buying, they get caught underwater, and then they average down. They do the worst thing possible with the stock light drives and they buy more. So yeah, so anyways, let's look at GLBS. Okay, this is, um, um, you know, this is one of those head fake plays. Um, it needs to get above 50 on RSI. It's still oversold on Fasto. You've got a potential crossover here on ADX. And, and so 
th this was a giant head fake on Friday. You know, it was looking awesome for a second there when it got above the 50 simple moving average at 124. And, and notice how the upper wick broke that level. There hadn't been a close above that level in months. Notice how there hasn't been a close above on this candle here. It got above before and it, and it head faked as well. And so notice that there was a big volume spike. So this could be people loading for the move higher. It looks like the chart is setting up. What we need to see next week is a close above the middle Bollinger Band at 118 and a close above the 50 simple moving average at 124. When you see a close above the 50 day simple moving average, that should be the signal that GLBS is ready to run higher and you could see a big run all the way up to the 100 day simple moving average at 257 if it can break this uh, resistance zone here at about 165. Notice how it's been a big resistance. So uh, there's like a triple top at that level. I mean, you could even count this wick right here. And so a break above that, that's going to signal and explosion up to this 250. So the chart is winding tight. It's setting up. Keep an eye on it. You got a MACD uh, bull cross starting on both time frames. Okay, if you look at the 15-minute chart for GLBS, um, we'll show you the uh, the action that happened. Notice how this happened late in the day. It was very quick. It was when when uh, top started moving and dries started moving together. Then everybody, you know, th this happens quite frequently. People will run other stocks in the sector. And so GLBS had one of those moves. If you notice here, here, it had the classic climax spike. It did not take long at all. It really it is a bummer when this happens. If you jumped in um, if, and it didn't take profits, but notice we've got the classic move. You got the break above resistance. This is the 300 simple moving average. It broke above. And then you got the the run to high of day and look at the pullback. The long upper wick is a red flag. Whenever that happens off of high of day, look for the red candle. If a red candle forms, that that's a signal to lock in gains. If you're a day trader, okay. Especially when you have the the notice the giant volume bar. Okay, that's a climax spike followed by the red candle. These are all signals to lock in gains for a reload lower, lower. You could have loaded here on the break, sold here, and been looking to reload on the bounce next week. Okay, so what we're looking for next week is we want to see this dollar ten level hold. Okay, this is where the, the 50, the 200, and the middle Bollinger Band are all located. That level has to hold. And then it needs to get back above the 300 at 114. If it can do that, that could signal a breakout higher. Okay, let's look at RLOG. This stock actually closed up 5%. Um, this is another marine transportation stock. We want to see uh, RSI get above 50. Um, there was a crossover on Fasto. This is actually bullish on ADX. ADX is bullish when you have the green line the black uh, above the black and the red line. The green line's plus DI, the black line's ADX, and the red line's minus DI. So this is signaling the bulls are currently in control. And, and this broke the middle Bollinger Band currently at 0 0.354 intraday on Friday, and it pulled back. It did close above EMAs 4, 8, and 13, so that was a nice close. And then notice here the pink line is crossed the red the, the green line to the upside. Notice over here you've got, uh, it's difficult to read, but EMA4 is at 0 0.329 and EMA8 is at 0 0.327. That is an EMA4, EMA8 bullish crossover, and that is an early reversal signal. So that's signaling a potential reversal on this chart. Notice how many times it's tried to hold the uh, middle Bollinger Band support and it's failed. Okay, so multiple times. Once you see the middle Bollinger Band turn into support, that's going to signal a new uptrend is starting. And then we want to see a break above the 50 day simple moving average at 443. It's setting up, you know when you see a big volume spike like this you know at the bottom of the chart many times that's a signal it's it's preparing for a run higher we've got uh, MACD bull crosses on both time frames down here and a recent PSAR bull flip okay let's look at DCIX this was another head fake play just like all the other charts it's oversold on RSI and FASTO this is extreme oversold levels at 2 really this is crazy oversold at 18 just it's a total piece of junk right now everybody's saying this is just total garbage and when people are you know when there's blood in the streets and there's complete carnage you know what that means that means it's time to be looking to buy you know you buy when there there there's blood in the streets when everybody's fearful that that's when you get the best opportunities and this is setting up for it here we've been waiting 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 for a close above EMA 4 at 47 we stock our prey we look at charts like this every single day until we get that break above resistance it started on Friday okay so you've got this nice long upper wick it broke EMA 8 intraday we really want to see a close above that level that would have really juice this chart up but it didn't happen that long upper wick was a real bummer it showed major profit taking possible dilution by the company it also could be people loading for a potential run higher so what we need to see for this to be in play it has to close above EMA 4 at 47 until it closes above EMA 4 at 47 it is going to be a risk to hold 
Okay, so it, it's all about the close. When you see these crazy stocks in the marine transportation sector make intraday moves and they're running, it, it, many times it pays to wait until end of day to see where they're going to close because it's all about the close. It's not about the intraday move. I mean, look back here. It broke above the 50-day simple moving average intraday, psyched everybody out and pulled back, and then it had a giant drop all the way down to 40 cents from freaking three dollars so it, it's all about the close if that closed above the 50-day simple moving average that could have signaled a breakout higher so so next week if it closes above EMA 4 that's going to be your clue it's ready to ready to break out or possibly make a run at least a dead cat bounce right now we're just looking for a bounce on this baby it has not bounced yet since this giant pullback this this chart is wound tight and at some point it's going to be a money maker so keep it on the radar uh, we've got uh, Mac D, we have, we got MACD pinched here we want to see the 12, 26, and 9 crossover like the, the 8, 13, and 5. Okay, keep an eye on SHIP, S-H-I-P. This is another one that looks like it's setting up. You know, um, it's not crazy oversold on RSI. RSI is at 42, so you want to see it get it back above 50. But if you look down here at Fasto at 3.8 and it had a bullish crossover, it's extreme oversold levels, and that means there's a lot of upside potential. Notice a doji formed on Friday. Okay, you may not call that a doji. It, I call it a doji, 0 0.13. That, that's close enough to, you know, the open being the, the, the close being the same price as the open. Um, many times this is signaling a bounce when you see a doji form at the bottom of a chart. So what we need to see here is a close above the 50-day simple moving average at 0 0.77. And then notice the top of the wick hit EMA 13 and the 100-day simple moving average basically at 81. We'll call it 81. If you see a close above 81 for ship next week, that's going to be the green light. That's going to signal it's ready to break out higher. And then we're going to want to see a close above the middle Bollinger Band at basically 90. And then we're talking about a new uptrend. So keep an eye on it. It's setting up. Look at, look at the map. D813 and 5, it's leveled. It want, you know, we're looking for a bullish crossover there. And then uh, a couple of stocks that aren't in the marine transportation sector, but are, you know, this is a stock that we have been stalking for a long time. We've been watching this setup. So I just want to show you this chart for AMPE because it finally closed above resistance last week. I mean, we've been watching this thing for a while. Um, you know, it just, it, one of those stocks that we're just waiting to see if something uh, good is going to develop here. You know, it had this whole pullback and we were looking for a potential double bottom here. It took forever to set up. It couldn't turn the the uh, the EMAs into EMA 4, 8, and 13 into support over here. You know, it had a real tough time and so we were just watching you know we wanted to see a break above the middle Bollinger Band for this thing to heat up and it pulled back and so finally last Thursday there was a close above the middle Bollinger Band notice that was the first close above the dotted purple line since the drop okay since the since May since right before the drop first close above and then what happened on Friday it closed above again so we're talking about two closes above EMA EMA's 4, 8, 13 and the middle Bollinger Band. Two closes in a row above the middle Bollinger Band. And then take a, take a look over here. What do we have? We have EMA4 at 54 and we have EMA8 at 53.5. That's the EMA8, EMA4 bullish crossover I was talking before. It's an early reversal signal and this could be a signal that AMP is setting up. So have it on the radar next week if this thing gets going and it turns that middle Bollinger Band into support. We're talking about a run back up here to the 50-day simple moving average at 6.35. Okay, there was a PSAR bull flip. And uh, we had recent uh, MACD bull crosses. You know, the, 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 the big thing with this stock right now is it's got no volume. And notice how it's been able to break resistance on, on very little shares. I mean, we're talking about in two days that there was uh, less than 500,000 shares traded and it closed above major resistance. That's a signal that, that the sellers have tired. And, and so we'll see next week if it can turn that middle Bollinger Band into support and get an uptrend going. And then the, the last one we want to take a look at here is going to be this uh, uh, FRZT. Uh, this is an uh, over-the-counter stock. Um, this is the Garfield Go uh, app play. And, um, you know, they came out with an 8K saying that they are going to have uh, um, th this app available on uh, iTunes and on Google. And so we're thinking that could be a potential catalyst coming up for this to move higher. We want to see RSI head above 50. Uh, Fasto is now above 20. Uh, there was a bullish crossover here on ADX. 
next. Notice how the green line crossed the red line to the upside. So the chart is heating up. Um, notice it's been in this nasty downtrend. It's bouncing off the lower Bollinger Band. Okay, there was a close above EMA4. That's what we were looking for at 0 0.020. So notice how it had closed before above that line, but, but check out how it, it's failed to get above EMA8. Okay, that's 0 0.021. And so that's going to be the key level to break next week. If you see a close above EMA8, that's going to be a major bullish change in trend. It's going to signal, signal that the FRZT is in play. Once it gets above the, the, the middle Bollinger Band and the 50-day simple moving average at 0 0.0025, that's going to be the signal that a possible new uptrend is starting. So this was a really good start um, uh, uh, last week. Uh, volume was picking up a little bit. It did uh, have some action. Just a, you know, It's a very thinly traded stock, but, but there was a little bit of buying into the close that, that, that you know, put, put it up above the EMA4. So we're just going to see if it can follow through and possibly get an uptrend going. Okay, thank you very much for viewing this video. If you'd like to learn more about charts and technical analysis, check us out at MyChartCoach.com and our YouTube channel at MyChartCoach.com. Thank you.